Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of VMware's Partnership Perspectives. I'm Anna Lawler, Vice President of Global Partner Ecosystem Marketing at VMware. I'm responsible for driving VMware's global partner marketing strategy, marketing to, through and with our broad ecosystem of partners. On this podcast, I'm pleased to bring you the stories and trends from VMware executives, industry partners and analysts. This week, I'm joined by Howie Lau, Managing Partner, Corporate Development and Partnerships at NCS. Howie was recognised as IT Leader of the Year by the Singapore Computer Society in 2020 and has played a key role in making NCS a digital services market leader in Southeast Asia, with 12,000 talented team members operating in more than 20 cities. Today, NCS serves 89% of Singapore's government ministries and agencies, helping to position Singapore as a global leader in digital government. Coming up, Howie and I discuss the benefits of becoming cloud smart, why complexity is not just a one-time statement, and how NCS's core capabilities, combined with VMware solutions and expertise, help customers transform and redefine what it means to be a modern organization. Enjoy the conversation. A very warm welcome, Howie, and a big thank you for joining us on the Partnerships Perspective podcast today. Let's kick it off with our first question. Who is NCS? And please tell us about the business you lead, market served, and your partnership with VMware. Well, Anna, first of all, a big thank you to VMware for having us. We've had the privilege of partnering with VMware for the last 10 years. NCS is a digital services company. We're focused in Asia Pac. We're currently about 12,000 strong across 20 plus cities in Asia. We're very proud that we're currently a market leader in Southeast Asia, and we've been around for about 42 years. We serve clients from the government to enterprises to telcos across different sectors. But one of the areas that we are proud of is that over the years, we've been partnering the Singapore government as part of their transformation to become a global leader in digital government. Uh, In fact, uh, we count about 89% of the Singapore government's ministries and agencies as our clients, something we're proud of. But however, we do recognize that the world is changing and it's important for us to continue transforming, to continue growing and continuing to serve our clients better. And I think towards that end, it's important to have great partners like VMware to continue the relationship that we have, but more importantly, to continue to push new grounds as well. That's wonderful to hear. And certainly at VMware, we're very proud of the 10-year partnership with NCS. It really sounds like it's a thriving business at the forefront of technology transformation in Southeast Asia. And interesting to hear as well, it sounds like you've been on your own transformation journey as the company has grown. So the cloud is is a big term now. And VMware, of course, prides itself on our multi-cloud position and our cloud smart strategy. What does cloud smart mean to you? And how do you describe the importance of having a smart cloud to your clients? Well, Anna, if you clock back 10 years, 15 years, where cloud was like an emerging term, compared to what we are today, where cloud is a necessary infrastructure, every conversation we have has cloud as a necessary foundation. A multi-cloud is a given. And our conversations with our clients typically start with aligning their business strategy with their cloud strategy because the cloud strategy does not exist in isolation. It has to align very tightly to the overall business strategy. So when we think about cloud smart, we think about firstly a strong alignment to the business jobs to be done and in mind, and then the ability to then design and architect a solution that creates hopefully a nice balance between agility, speed, cost, repeatability, predictability, control, and even risk management. It sounds like a mouthful, but it is true that most of the clients basically would like all boxes thick, but not all boxes are necessarily ticked in the same manner. So we spend a lot of time with our client in being able to design what would be optimal at that point of time. And then thereafter, you have to adjust again because the world keeps changing. So even after you finish an architecture and an implementation that fits the business requirements, as well as a balance across each of these requirements, and it's then time to continue adjusting again. So Cloud Smart is a journey, but it's a journey that I think all our clients are undergoing. That's interesting. I love how you describe multi-cloud is, is a given now, and it's a necessity for us all. 
And it's clear that that foundational work is really key, finding the right cloud for different applications or workloads and their specific requirements. And of course, aligning that cloud transformation journey to the overall business strategy. Love to hear you talk about how you're enabling clients to be more agile with that flexibility to scale up, scale down. So your customers are really reaping the benefits of multi-cloud. If I could just jump in, I think specifically on that point, all our clients are looking for being able to have resiliency in their cloud infrastructure. And to your point about the flexibility of being able to scale up and scale down as required, depending on the remark, the demands as well as the environment. And that's where the work that we do at VMware allows us to stay focused on bringing to clients propositions about increasing business agility, cost efficiencies typically do come out as a key parts of the considerations as well. Let's dive into that a bit more. What are the biggest challenges that NCS faces with respect to helping your clients with their digital transformation? Ah, So if I take a couple of step backs in terms of what is happening in industry, we do believe a couple of things front and center. One is that the reality of hyperconnectivity is upon us. Everything that is default offline will become default online. So it's not just on the organizational level, it's not just on the B to C level, but almost everything will be connected. Number two is that we believe that there's only one speed in our tech world, which is fast. The slowest we'll ever be is yesterday. So the speed only gets faster. The third is that there's an ongoing challenge on talent. It's kind of exacerbated by speed because the half-life of any tech talent or tech capability perhaps is only now 24 months, 36 months. So there's this constant need to build the tech capability, whether it's on the client side, on the industry side, or on the company level. And we think the fourth area that is creating a challenge for some of our clients is that the boundaries of what an organization is, whether it's geographical or industry definition, is changing. So as a result of which, if you add the combination of hyperconnectivity, the speed of change, the talent dimension, as well as the dimension of industrial lines blurring, it just means that every requirement and every organization needs are getting a lot more complex. The complexity quotient in any requirements is going up. Because NCS, we work largely with governments as well as large enterprises. Their needs are a lot more complex. So as a result of which, if we zoom down to specifically, then working with them in, let's say, in the cloud migrations and cloud architecture, we have to factor in all this complexity and all these potential changes and the definition of what an organization is, as well as the ongoing talent in order to support it. So I would say that it is the complexity is, a again, not a one-time statement because with a lot of the relationships we have with our client, it is multi-year. So almost every other milestone, we have to revisit the ability to address the complexities. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm sure people listening can certainly relate to those challenges you outlined, and it really reinforces that we're always on journey to cloud smart. And if I were to add to that, the complexity just means that inevitably does not start with a cloud strategy and it almost never ends with a cloud strategy because it will be what is the business problem you're trying to solve. And then it will be a conversation that says, now that I have a view of what it takes to solve my jobs to be done, Here's how I want to implement it on my hybrid cloud, my on-prem, my off-prem. How do I want to do my virtualization? By the way, this is how I want to integrate it to my security stack. By the way, this is how I want to tap onto my data lakes that I have percolating somewhere in another part of the organization. And I do have two experiments happening on AI and metaverse that I would like to be part of the full picture as well. So in most cases, it is hyper-connected, which is part of the challenge of most organizations of digital transformation. That's very interesting the long life customer relationship that you must be engaging with clients on. So what business and technology trends are driving NCS to ramp up next, uh, your digital services arm? And what does this mean to VMware and to your customers? We started the next digital arm two years ago with the intent of putting a focus around four areas. These four areas are cloud, data, digital and platform because it was important for us to be able to complement our existing lines of businesses of applications, infrastructure, engineering, and cyber with these new needs that clients are consistently asking for as part of their overall implementation. So cloud, data, platform, digital, always features. So it is an arm that we use to build up the capabilities, build up the muscles, drive innovation frontiers, 
And this is where the teams work closely with VMware as well, because in the whole space of cloud, it was important for us to be able to take the core capabilities and to be able to then marry with some of the solutions from VMware as we go to the client. So for example, VMware has the Tanzu offering that helps to solve the inefficiencies in the applications portfolio. So then our cloud team within Nix works closely with VMware to bring that conversation to the client to try and tick the boxes, whether you're talking about agility, reliability, cost, responsiveness, control, or risk. And we like to think that NCS, we kind of see ourselves as the bridge to support our clients in implementing the VMware products and services and then supplementing with all the other needs that the client may be looking for as well. That's great. It sounds like you're seeing incredible growth in the digital service arm of the business. And really, that is so connected to helping clients achieve that the cloud smart state that we discussed. Pivoting now, we highly appreciate NCS's 10-year relationship with VMware. What's your perspective on what's driving our healthy partnership? And how does NCS differentiate in the marketplace? Well, it takes two hands to clap. The fact that we have a strong relationship in the last 10 years, I think, speaks to both teams coming together. And we like to think of partnerships across perhaps three or four layers. On the most foundational piece is that the complementary nature of our capabilities must be there. What NCS brings to the table must complement what VMware brings as a solution provider. What VMware brings as a solution provider must be able to complement what we do. And I think that's a very hand-in-glove fit over the last 10 years, which is great. Second is that we do appreciate the support services that VMware provides in terms of training and support because, as mentioned earlier, capability upskilling is almost an ongoing necessity. So the ability to have a partner like VMware constantly bringing our teams up to speed is going to be key. I think the third is that it's nice to have a complementary offering and support services, but if there's no results and we can't close the deal and we can't really bring the results to the clients, then all is lost. And I think we're proud to say that the success that we had together with our clients and the results that the clients have seen, whether it's in terms of cost efficiencies, whether it's in terms of speed to market, agility, otherwise, has given us ongoing impetus to bring to more clients. And I would say the last item is that you can have good solutions together, good results, but if the teams can't get along, it doesn't work. And so I'm glad to share that VMware team and the NCS team get along well together and they go to the market well together and they engage and service our clients well together. That's wonderful to hear that. I couldn't agree more and I love that phrase you used. I think you said it takes two hands to clap. And just to reinforce, obviously, for a successful partnership, results are key. And just really enjoyed hearing how you described before about speed to impact, speed to adapt, and your track record for, I think you described it as repeatability and scalability. So those things are really a winning formula, I think, in a successful partnership. So perhaps you can tell us about your latest VMware competency as a sovereign cloud provider. What role does NCS play to deliver sovereign SaaS offerings for enterprises seeking data monetization and data sovereignty? Well, I think we're very pleased and very proud to be the first in Singapore to achieve the sovereign cloud competency because the teams, our guys have passed stringent requirements and marrying with the experience and expertise does help a lot in terms of giving our clients that confidence to take them through the journey to securely move through their cloud transformation. So for us as a cloud sovereign provider, The clients who are keen to deploy such technology through us can be assured that we have folks who do pass the highest level of standards, not just complying with the local requirements and standards, but at the same time with the latest skills to be able to take them through this journey. So we recognize this is just one of the milestones, and I'm sure that we'll be continually challenged by our clients and by ourselves to continually upping our game in terms of the capabilities as well. So it's a milestone. We're very pleased with it, but I'm sure there's more that we need to do. And it's such an interesting time in the market with data privacy, local and international law. We're really seeing strong demand for sovereign cloud as customers are striving to maintain, of course, compliance and stay on top of that legislation. So we're going to pivot now to what we're calling a lightning round. So a slight change in pace. (laughs) So I'm going to kick this off. It's the first of three questions. What is the best advice you've ever received? Okay, let me rule out my mom and my wife. Perhaps it will be this advice from a ex-boss from a few lives ago. One day he came up and he says, Howie, 
what have you done today that is better than yesterday? I didn't think too much of it. And then a week later, I met him again and he asked me again, what have you done today that's better than yesterday? And what I thought was a very simple question turns out to be something that I use every now and then to remind myself what are the ways that I am spending time and resource to get better, to learn new skills, to find better ways of not just improving the work I do, but the skills that I have. Not easy because I can't think of what I'm doing today that's better than yesterday. But I'd like to believe that compared to a month ago, I perhaps have learned a few new things. I think the difficulty is that the recognition that if we live and we want to thrive in the technology world, continuous learning is a must. It's not just for technical folks, it's, I think it's for everyone that swims in this pond. So the ability to catch up with the latest, the ability to understand how it works, the ability to connect the dots is going to be key. So I kind of have it as my ongoing reminder to myself that there is a need to continually learn to be able to be relevant in this industry. That's a great takeaway. Thank you for sharing that one. So if you could create one law in the world that everybody had to follow, what would that be? One law in the world. Yesterday, I came off a discussion on sustainability. So perhaps the one law that would be helpful for accelerating a sustainability transformation would be that every CEO and board chairman should have an equal measure of sustainability targets to their financial targets. I think that will accelerate quite a fair bit of sustainability transformation that we would like to see. I agree. That's a wonderful suggestion. And then last question in our lightning round. What excites you most about the future evolution of the IT ecosystem? The future of the IT, that's an easy one. I am excited about AI. I think most people are. If you think back last September, one of the key things that happened last September was that there was this graphic artist that put up an AI-generated art piece in the Colorado Art Fest and won the art competition and won $300. It's a small art fest. It's a small painting. It's a small $300, but it created an uproar in the art world that AI is coming. That's September last year. October last year, Mark Zuckerberg put up a video with his Hawkins speaking engineer that allowed Mark to speak in English and got translated to a Chinese dialect called Hokkien. And the engineer was able to reply in Hokkien and got translated immediately to English. Uh, that was quite mind-blowing because AI is applied to natural languages. That was mind-blowing. Then in November, the world went mad because ChatGPT came along. In five days, became the fastest adopted. A month ago, we had GPT-4 accelerating, being announced that enhances the value of uh, the power of GPT-3, which powers ChatGPT by multiple folds. And then last week, a number of the tech leaders around the world put up a paper to say, perhaps we need to put a bit of brakes on to recalibrate the speed we are moving with AI. So I think it's going to be a tremendous couple of years with AI. It is also potentially fraught with challenges because it could be Skynet, but who knows, but I'm excited by AI. It's an exciting time. Well, Howie, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. Really enjoyed our conversation and a big thank you for joining us. Thanks so much, Anna. And big thanks to Liam Ware as well. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Howie Lau. It was inspiring to hear his thoughts on the necessity of cloud infrastructure and how cloud smart strategies can't exist in isolation. We're excited to see NCS and VMware continue the decade-long partnership in helping governments, enterprises and telcos evolve their IT architectures to be more agile, resilient and cost-effective. To connect with Howie, you can find him on LinkedIn. Thank you for joining me on this episode today. Remember to subscribe, follow and review the VMware Partnership Perspectives podcast from your streaming platform of choice. For more information on VMware's partner programmes, please visit Partner Executive Edge on VMware.com. I'm Anna Lawler. Thank you for listening and I hope you'll join us next time.